So if you're in a boat and it's full of water, you can just siphon water out so you don't sink. But leaving a permanent catheter in an overflowed bladder is a bad idea. Let's talk about why. Hey guys, Dr. Segel here. So the question is, I can't pee. Why can't I just live with a catheter forever? It is so convenient. So at the end, I'm going to talk about, we're going to go through a lot of the reasons why it's not a good idea. And at the end, I'm going to talk about one of the lesser discussed, but maybe one of the most important reasons why you don't want to have a permanent catheter in your bladder, if at all possible. So first of all, why are some reasons why people have a chronic catheter for people that don't know? So some people have um, really bad incontinence or leakage. And if they have, let's say they have like an ulcer in their back and we don't want urine to get in that ulcer, they'll have a catheter in to drain the urine away from that area so it doesn't um, get urine soaked in it. Some people can't pee for a variety of reasons. And we have a lot of videos that talk about that. Neurologic reasons. The prostate's too big, um, they have uh, bad diabetes, uh, there's the pelvic organ prolapse, there's tons of reasons why people can't pee. So that's one reason why people may consider a chronic catheter in the urethra. Some people are extremely immobile and they can't, and they don't have the means to make it to the commode. And those individuals may have a chronic catheter for that reason. But um, the, the underlying thing, and this is probably the most significant reason why it's not a good idea to have a chronic catheter, is it's huge infection risk, right? So your urinary tract, if you got a catheter that's draining from the outside world, I'm sorry, draining your bladder to the outside world, right? Usually there's a sphincter here that's closing the passageway from the outside world into your bladder. Now, with this catheter in, you've bypassed that, right? So continually, bacteria is flowing into your bladder, into your urinary tract. Uh, that natural mechanism for preventing that from happening, uh, it's not present any longer. So if you take a urine culture on somebody with a catheter, invariably there will be bacteria in there. And it's only a matter of time till that bacteria causes a clinically significant urinary tract infection. So it is a huge infection risk. And that's probably the number one reason that if we do not have to leave a chronic catheter in you from the urethra, we really, really try not to. So these catheters, if they're in the bladder, okay, it's not a good idea to have a permanent catheter that's draining to the outside world because it can erode through the urethra. I've seen cases where guys have chronic catheters and it will actually erode to the base of their penis. In women, it's particularly devastating because it can erode into the urinary sphincter because women's urethras are obviously much shorter and cause permanent incontinence. So that's the second reason why what we call urethral erosion or erosion of the catheter uh, outside the urethra, which is super common for chronic indwelling catheters. These catheters can also get clogged and cause an emergency. So if we're plumbers, which is the analogy I always use, and we're using this catheter to drain urine to the outside world, when you have infected urine that's chronically there, it will crystallize. Invariably, it will crystallize and it'll obstruct this catheter, okay? And when it obstructs the catheter, urine's not getting out and that's obviously an emergency. Oftentimes this happens on nights and weekends and the next stop for that individual is the emergency room. They have to either try to flush the catheter or change the catheter. So that's another reason why it's not so good to have a chronic urethral catheter. Uh, the fact that it can get clogged and cause an emergency. People say, well, my bladder doesn't work. My doc says my bladder doesn't work. We have another video on that if you check it out. What are my options? So believe it or not, intermittent catheterization is actually less of an infection risk than a chronic catheter in the urethra. Most people, when we tell them that they're going to have to catheterize themselves, they look at us like we have two heads. But over time, they oftentimes will get used to it. We do the technique in our office, we explain it to them, and that decreases the overall inoculum or amount of bacteria in the bladder, um, and it's much less than having a chronic indwelling catheter. 
a tube from above, a super pubic tube. Now that's still going to introduce bacteria into the bladder uh, on a continual basis, uh, but it's coming from up here, okay, instead of down below. So some studies have shown that there's less bacteria that can travel uh, into the bladder if the super pubic tube is draining the urine from the bladder instead of a urethral catheter. More than that, you don't have the problem of urethral erosion, right? Because it's not going through the urethra. It's going from the outside world right in the abdomen into the bladder. And most people find it much more comfortable. Uh, that's usually a 10 minute procedure that we do as an outpatient to put that super pubic tube in. The other thing that we really try to do is fix the problem, right? So uh, sometimes I'll see patients that have come to me from other urologists and they, um, have a very enlarged prostate and they have an indwelling catheter. And I'll ask them, have we done any studies like urodynamics or any other assessments to see if your bladder functions? Because if it does, we can potentially open up your prostate and get you to empty better and leave you without this chronic indwelling catheter. So that's the other thing. Try medications or try surgical procedures to fix the problem of incomplete emptying so we can rid you of this chronic catheter. So that's certainly an option, uh, specifically to rationally think about whether this person um, deserves to have their bladder given up on. Uh, so that um, that's something we consider. Uh, to be clear, in some people, elderly people, people that can't undergo surgery, sometimes having chronic drainage of the bladder is the best option, uh, but we make every effort to make it to make it the last resort, to be clear. And this is my pearl of wisdom. This is the one reason why sometimes, and this will resonate with patients about why we, why one of the other reasons why we try not to have chronic urethral catheter drainage. When this catheter stays in the bladder, it causes perpetual inflammation in the bladder, okay? Uh, and inflammation over time can turn cancerous. I've seen patients with chronic inflammation in the bladder and then they get a bladder cancer from it and sometimes a significant bladder cancer, um, squamous types of bladder cancers. And so if you have a chronic stone in the bladder, chronic catheter drainage, you're predisposed to having this problem of chronic inflammation that can cause a cancer. In fact, in all my patients that have chronic drainage of the urinary tract, I will look in their bladder once a year to make sure I don't see any uh, developing cancers. So that is a reason that a lot, a lot of times we don't talk about, but it's super important to think about is that it can cause a cancer, this chronic inflammation in the bladder induced or caused by a chronic catheter uh, in there. So guys, I hope that's I hope that's helpful to you. Hopefully it explains to you why having a chronic catheter in the bladder is not the best option. Um, there are certain circumstances where we have to do it, but we really try not to. Thank you so much for listening. We certainly appreciate it. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, please check out other videos in this playlist so you know as much as we do. Thank you again.